Howdy, howdy, and welcome to... But it was aliens. Howdy! The extraterrestrial history society and cultural comedy podcast where two former men in black take turns to present possible alien files to each other to determine, together, for the safety of humankind, whether aliens really are visiting us. I'm your main man for today's probe, Kevin the Grey, and with me is your side bitch, Granville Moonwalker. Um, who's side bitch? Am I the, the audience? Audience. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. What up, guys? <laughs> I'm your side bitch. <laughs> Shout out to Greg in Guatemala. What up, Greg? <laughs> and Peter in Texas. <laughs> what up, Pete? <laughs> I'm your side bitch. <laughs> Oh, uh, I ain't no one's side bitch. Today's story is about a man who moved to Australia called Peter Curie. Peter was born in 1964 in Lebanon and migrated to Australia in 1973. He met his future wife in 1981. He didn't need to woo her with an alien video and all seemed well. Ooh. Peter. S- sorry. No, go on. So, oh, so they were quite a young couple and... I would say childhood sweethearts. 64 to 81. Mm-hmm. That's what? I think. 16, 17? Yeah, between 16 so. and 18, depending on when their birthday are. Where the birthday are. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, all seemed well. He didn't need to wear an alien video. Peter didn't even think about his strange experience when he was seven during the summer of 1971. When he was playing on the flat roof of a neighbour's house, Peter was playing with friends who suddenly became frozen like statues as an egg-shaped craft hovered above. Next thing they knew, all the children found themselves on the ground floor with no memory of how they got there. Oh no. Things were normal now for Peter. Uh, what? (laughs) Uh, yep. So the kids were frozen. Yep. Kind of like in suspended animation. Mm Mm-hmm. Except for him. Yep. But then they all Ah. awoke on the floor and didn't know what happened. So, I hope you're going to explain what happened between the time of like them being frozen obviously he's not frozen notices the craft what happens between then and the kids waking up or are his memories wiped as well his memories are wiped as well (laughs) (laughs) this is all we have (laughs) that's pretty much um the extent of today's file actually (laughs) (laughs) neuralizer (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I am actually going to have to neuralise you after this one Because it's very sensitive You'll find out why Have you neuralised me before? No <laughs> Why did you wink? <laughs> I didn't wink I feel <laughs> <laughs> Like I may have lost time here at some point <laughs> <laughs> So yeah On the 12th of July 1988 Peter was awoken by the feeling of someone, or something, grabbing his ankles. Tokoloshi. Oh, the Tokoloshi. <laughs> <laughs> he went to fight them off, but quickly discovered that he was paralysed. It was then that he realised that several strange beings were surrounding him as he lay motionless on his bed. One of the beings seemed to be tall, thin, and golden yellow in colour with big black eyes. Oh, that's new. Mm. Like golden yellow in colour. Newish. <laughs> what else has been. You'll find golden. out momentarily. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Once I name things. <laughs> the secret's out. <laughs> and I won't neuralise you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking wink at me. So it had a long needle in its hands, which it inserted into the side of Peter's head. <laughs> Peter oh. was. Out. He regained consciousness. He regained consciousness and ran into an adjoining room where his family were to be greeted by the sight of family members also laying motionless and absent. So he ran to a room where his family were to be greeted by the sight of family uh, members who I may have read it a little bit funny, but it yeah. makes sense. <laughs> a little bit quick. So it sounded like the family were to be greeted by family that were frozen. <laughs> so Peter woke them and discovered that all thought only 10 minutes had passed but it had been closer to 2 hours or lost time Peter was examined medically with his head injury verified 
This was before the internet, remember? Peter had nothing to compare his experiences to, and at this point didn't know what to make of his experiences. Peter went about his everyday life. He settled down and married about 1990. But at 7am on the morning of 23rd of July 1992, something else happened. This is pretty intense. Oh. I mean, you're being stabbed in the head with a yeah, needle. Yeah, We discussed a file um, previously, only in the last couple of episodes, didn't we? What one was it? Um, what, someone being stabbed in the head? One of your ones. Um, needle. And they went motionless. Was it Calvin oh, and... Oh, they were like a little prick in the arm. That wasn't... Mm. That was in the arm, though. That's not... Yeah, in the but side I'm just saying, like, head. injected. Yeah. So we have form here. Just... This one got it in the head. <laughs> <laughs> Which... Oh, no. My head. So did they inject him with something, or did they... I guess so. Um, take something out. Ooh. I assumed they'd injected him or like popped something straight into an area of his brain to just clonk him. But and then he could've... can't remember anything lost time. But they could have, like... They could have, yeah, they could have. And then removed brain well, to fluid be fair, or something. Once they injected him, they could have done anything to him. He ain't going to have a clue. That's true. He could have been hashtag probed. So Peter... Oh, sorry, are you still asking questions? Yeah, I was just going to say, the whole family were... Obviously asleep and he woke them up. Yep, yep, yep. But were they just asleep in bed? Yep, yep, yep. So if he woke them up, yep. did he not just wake them up from being asleep? Nope, nope, nope. How could he tell they were motionless and Time not just sleeping? Time had passed. It was like early. It wasn't bedtime. But it was two hours. That's a lot of time to pass, isn't it? Yeah. But if he was... So he was in bed. Yep, yep, yep. And... <laughs> He wakes up, rushes into another room. Yep, yep, yep. Where everyone else is asleep. Yep, yep, yep. And he just wakes them up. Yep, yep, yep. So he's had a nightmare <laughs> at the moment and he's just gone and woke everyone else up. Mm, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> okay. Peter had returned home to Sydney from the train station, having dropped off his wife. Peter felt a bit ill, so went to lay down in bed. Peter woke somewhat startled. He was aware that something was lighting the bedroom. Peter's eyes adjusted and he realised there were two strange naked women kneeling on his bed, one of whom was Nordic in ethnicity and the other of whom was Asian. The Nordic female appeared well over six feet, had a somewhat elongated face with a sharply pointed chin. Being a Nordic... Of course, she had blue eyes, fine blonde hair and fair skin. The Asian female had darker skin and almost completely black eyes with black hair in a page boy style. I have a rough mock-up of the blonde if you'd like to look at this. <coughs> you tell me you have a rough mock-up of a blonde. You've given me a computerized looking picture of a woman it's a mock-up yes kind of cgi style that would be a mock-up her eyes are blue what color is her hair she has a massive forehead mm -hmm. and her hair is green i'd say that's blondie green i would call that green with oh, a hint shit. of blue. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like turquoise i would call this a nordic would you say she's sexy though <laughs> I wouldn't say she's not. Fair days. <laughs> what would you say? I would say that hair is turquoise. Let's move on. And you'd like to run your hands through it? No. So what do you think happened next? Three of them, right? Three of them. And can you remember what two of them were? What year was it? I believe it was 1992. They played Monopoly. <laughs> you remember and... that we've got a naked Nordic and... A naked lady of Asian-looking descent. This guy is married. He's yep. not going to cheat on his wife. Mm -hmm. so I'm not saying that. I'm saying they played Monopoly. Okay. Or he was a gentleman and got up and went and got them some clothes from <laughs> the wardrobe. That's a good shout, yeah. And whereabouts is this? Australia. So they didn't have a cup of tea. He got them a nice cold beer. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe they watched a movie. They watched a movie. 
or what time of day was it? Was it at night? I did say it. Um, I no, think he was it going was seven a.m., so, wasn't it? Yeah, he dropped off at the train station, and then gone to bed. Well, maybe if yeah, you're feeling eight. better, they uh, went for a surf, <laughs> <laughs> for the barbecue. Okay, we got a few theories going on and, here. Uh, he he got to know them better. So you're going for socialising or monopoly? Yep, which okay. still counts as socialising. He made two new friends. So Peter felt that although there was no formal communication, the Nordic female appeared to be in charge and may have been giving the Asian female some form of non-verbal instruction. The Nordic female was very strong and pulled Peter's face towards her space titties <laughs> three times. The third time, Peter bit her nipple. He literally swallowed a piece of her nip. The Nordic female did not react with any sign of pain and there was no blood. It appeared that at this point, the entities raised that this isn't the way you do things on this planet okay so she wanted to be motorboated <coughs> mm-hmm. or that's their way of saying hello <laughs> <laughs> what an amazing greeting he bit her nipple off yep there was bit it these, clean off are these titties made of um like gummy bears or like foam like the foam shrimp there was nothing to suggest that they weren't but you could so, bite anyone's nipple off if you bit just we wouldn't do that i hope you wouldn't do that no i wouldn't do that but he <laughs> so he bit her gummy bear titty off he did or yeah. the nipple anyway her space gummy bear titty <laughs> we're complicating things here but they they also said this isn't the way to do things on this planet Mm -hmm. indicating that he's no longer on his planet. No, no, sorry. Or, what I meant was that they realised that pulling his head into your titty isn't the right way to go about things. Oh. So they... Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. And he would have been like, no. Mm -hmm. That's... Stop putting my head in your space titty yeah. and biting your nipple off. That's kind of... Like he gave him two chances before he did it on the third time. Forceful and a little bit rapey. <laughs> We're discussing this so matter-of-factly. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, it happened. Uh, this is your case. Indeed. So she was quite... I mean, He any... felt the strength because she pulled him towards her space titty. But she's six foot. Mm-hmm. Plus. I mean, if any woman is six foot and grabs you but To be fair, there are a lot of women that aren't six foot and they grab you by the head. You're not... You have no power yeah. to resist when your head is pulled towards a space titty or a titty. <laughs> Case in point. <laughs> so did he... Sorry. One more before we carry on. Mm -hmm. Did he swallow the nipple? Yes. Or did he spit it out? He swallowed it. So he's a swallower. Okay. He's a swallower, yes. He's a nip swallower. So Peter begun coughing uncontrollably. Got that nipple stuck. <laughs> Lodged in his esophagus. <laughs> he may or may not have been reacting to the alien nip he swallowed, but when he looked up, the visitors had vanished. One thing in this file is a little more mind-blowing than our usual abduction-related probes. For Peter went to the bathroom to urinate straight after this, but when he tried, he noticed that it was really painful. As Peter examined his wang in his hand, he realised that there was a blonde hair wrapped around his dick. Peter removed the hair and had the forward thinking to place the hair in a sealed bag. Peter knew this wasn't his wife's hair and now he thought he may have proof of what just happened. The Nordic blonde visitor. I want you to really think about this. Why would finding a blonde hair on his dick be so interesting and unusual in comparison to many of our previous probes? Was he trying some weird new... <laughs> You're coming up with an alternative theory here. Yeah. You know how people like to danger wank? <laughs> <laughs> he rapped. Where did he get the hair from, though? I don't know. Just or was it a rope? Like, he might <laughs> he have choked his dick, literally. Met someone... It could have just been anyone that he knew. Like, he just gave some woman that he knew a hug... Mm -hmm. And her hair ended up on his, like, jacket or hoodie or whatever. And then slipped and, and he fell. And he saw it and was like, that's a long hair. 
a likely story. I wonder if hmm. I can uh, danger wank with that. <laughs> so you think Peter is into some kinky shit? I think he is into some kinky shit. Because what happened to the nipple? Well, Did he cough it back up? Not Did entirely sure. Or he might have shit it out. <laughs> but yeah, we know that the aliens were trying to fuck him. But were, were they though? Well, he's got their hair I mean, around his dick. They were naked, trying to make him motorboat. But he didn't go back to sleep. Well, of course he didn't. He was but, being a bit raped, really, wasn't he? Well, the thing is, he bit the nipple off. Yep. Then they said, sorry, this isn't how you do things here. Or and vanished. Something yeah. like that, and they disappeared. Mm-hmm. So where in that time frame did he get fucked? Well, he woke up to find them naked beside him, didn't he? So they were obviously trying to do things. Oh, that's a good woke. point. And then they were like, oh, shit. Let's just He's not consensual. Motorboat him. <laughs> Let's show him these titties. That'll get him on board. But that's a... Oh. How long Questionable. must yeah. the alien pew be? To be and wrapped. also to be wrapped around... Mm-hmm. All right, can we move on? Because I'm just thinking of the weirdest <laughs> things right now. <laughs> Either the hair is big... Or his dick is tiny. (laughs) Or the hair has a mind of its own. You've missed one important factor here, though. This is physical evidence. The holy grail of ufology. A pube, if you will. (laughs) A biological sample taken from an abduction incident. Have you played Bayonetta? No. So Bayonetta can control her Her hair. hair. Yeah. What if this Nordic alien has done the same thing but she was jacking him off with her hair. He woke up before she could get the hair to get fully round. Yeah, yeah. She got a grip at the base, but then he woke up and the hair split. So, did he take this um, sample to a lab? To Hell analyze? yeah! <laughs> Good old Pete. Let's go down that rabbit hole, yo. So, at some point, Peter went to someone with his experiences and asked for help. It took some time, but by 1998, a gentleman named Bill Chalker had put together a scientific biochemistry team to conduct the world's first DNA analysis on a potential alien. To begin with, they analysed the shaft of the hair. <laughs> Not the shaft. His. <laughs> <laughs> Although technically being found around his shaft, I guess this is actually Peter's shaft. Has Peter got blonde hair himself? I don't believe so. So we don't know. Um, I don't think he does. Okay. I'm sure I would have written that down. (laughs) Chalker's team wanted to probe whether the hair would support or more likely rule out the extraterrestrial story. It surpassed everyone's expectations. It came back as like inconclusive or something that it wasn't a human. It was alive. I was about to say, if you say this is an Uh, animal hair, I'm going to be very disgusted. Um, Okay, so what I can imagine from that sentence is that it wasn't human, or if it was, it may have had a different DNA profile to that of... And if that was accurate, and this was definitively not of Earth origin, how would you feel about that? Do you mean I'd be like, whoa... So I'm saying to you, if we, space if we had definitive evidence that we've got a hair not of Earth, how would you feel about it? I'd kind of want to see it. Does it move on its own? <laughs> <laughs> Will it kill me? Will it try to choke my dick? <laughs> <laughs> Can't rule out. You'll have to excuse my pronunciations in this next section. Can we go see it? <laughs> <laughs> so. 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 Eh. Polymerase chain reaction DNA profile test was conducted. The analysis confirmed that the hair came from someone who was biologically very close to human genetics, but was of a very unusual ethnic or racial group. The DNA matched a rare Chinese 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 the DNA match the rare Chinese mongoloid profile I just want to add in here that several stories of this file all listed the genetics as mongoloid but that is obviously outdated terminology today as is 
Caucasoid, Negroid and Australioid. Today we use the names of places or people rather than generalising. But the DNA profile, however, is one of the rarest types known, further from the human mainstream than all but the Aboriginals and African Pygmies. Yes, this, this became even stranger when looking at the colour of the strand, natural blonde. The DNA profile of an Asian mitochondrial DNA type would be expected to be black. The original owner of this hair therefore could be expected to be just as Peter claimed, a fair blonde female who does not need much colour in her hair or skin. The results were published in 1999. Also, before you ask it, the hair was not chemically treated, aka it was not dyed. That's pretty interesting, but if only we had more compelling evidence suggests that this was definitively an alien human hybrid, or alternatively, that we could confirm that there are lots of blonde Asian Nordic people out there. Because as it is, this DNA is only matched to four known cases in the world, and of course, all had black hair. Ooh. Is... Could it be possible that this person was an albino? What are the chances? I mean, it's rare, but it's possible. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> hadn't thought of that, had you? No, I have. It's just, I don't want to... Okay. I've got more, but I bet you weren't thinking this investigation was going to get serious, were you? <laughs> we have actual evidence. <laughs> you were thinking this is just going to be another man who's claiming to have sex with aliens. <laughs> no, 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 no. We have an actual physical alien pube. <laughs> is it a pube, though? Yes, it's a pube. But how do you know it's a pube? It was long enough it was to wrap around his penis. It came off his penis, it was a pube. Shaft. <laughs> but her hair might have just been falling out. Or she might have been it, kinky with his shaft. It came off his dick, it was a pube. It was his pube, but it wasn't his. But it was his pube. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he was molested by an albino. Nearly. Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? Chupacabra. Um, the abominable snowman, that's what I was thinking of. Ah, uh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay, yeah. I don't think he'd be going around Australia, but <laughs> might have gone on vacation. To, to, he wanted some sun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he hops on a plane. <laughs> Gun the ice! Has a shave. <laughs> <laughs> so they did a second DNA test on the root of the hair. The root came up with crazy results. This DNA profile was of Basque Gaelic heritage, so French, Spanish, Scottish. Nordics have been believed to be connected to the development of red hair in humans with the gene having possibly been carried by Vikings. Meanwhile, blue eyes are known to be a genetic mutation which occurred between 6,000 and 10,000 years ago, traced back to one single individual. In this second test, there were also indications of a CCR5 gene deletion mutation which could make people immune to diseases such as HIV and smallpox. I must point out that these DNA test samples were suggestive rather than definitive, but there aren't any other explanations as to how the funk this could happen. All of this within one hair. Going back to the Asian sequence, the DNA signature occurs in an isolated group of people known as the Lahu, whom are limited to only a couple of small areas, including the U Yunnan province. The Lahu have much UFO and alien visit visitation within their culture. Uh, this this has gone way <laughs> further than I expected. <laughs> Hasn't it though? <laughs> I literally saw the, the tagline in an article. Was it Nordic pube or something? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought this is going to be a great one. <laughs> but it just, just the rabbit hole got deeper and deeper and deeper. So are the Lahu like mm -hmm. the... I want to say the select group that these visitors will visit. Potentially. And so in like their history, are there drawings, writings yes. pertaining to yes. visitation from aliens? Okay. Yes. And do they communicate with these aliens on a regular, or not on a regular basis? I but don't have that information. Okay. They're like an old culture. 
and they're rife with alien stories within that. Ah, I just wondered if it was a case of them seeing the aliens or communicating mm-hmm. with. Yeah. So disease immunity. Mm-hmm. So they don't die when I wouldn't say they don't die, but they cannot catch a human disease. They're protected that can... potentially against human diseases, which if you were an alien species investigating otherwise known as hashtag probing species. You would want to be immune from mm-hmm. any yeah. Makes sense. This is really gone further than I expected. <laughs> We've got a pube. <laughs> um I'm intrigued to know more. This pube is um taken us down a rabbit hole. (laughs) So this file would become even more interesting if the region indicated by these tests was an area of documented high strangeness, which, as you all know, is the term used for areas that attract much UFO activity. The Chinese province of Yunnan is indeed one such area. There have been strange lights seen in the sky on many occasions, even if you only consider the past 30 years. Humans have been playing with DNA for a while now. With clone sheep, shout out to Dolly. Mm-hmm. We can probably do more than we can show for ethical reasons. So this hair has features of two completely separate cultures, both with deep UFO lore. Is it possible that Nordic beings and the Lahu and maybe even other human ethnicities are being mixed together with aliens, or maybe even more advanced humans? from the future are going back in time to mix our genetic code to protect against upcoming difficulties. Is such a thing even possible? Maybe humans are aliens and have colonised Earth for genetic testing. I'm not saying that's possible, but it's possible. Is it also possible that some people from these two tribes have actually met and had offspring? I mean, anything's possible. I'm saying. Is it possible that you could eat your own head? Yes, to an extent. <laughs> <laughs> Anything's possible. Doesn't mean it's practical, but didn't I say earlier on, this hair, there's four specimens of a similar type in the world, was yeah, it? Yeah, and they're all So just the, black hair. the chances of this one hair showing up in Australia are mind-boggling. We've got more chance of winning the lottery twice. Especially in that time. But then we don't know how that culture like operates. Like the Lahu. Mm-hmm. We don't know how they operate. Like what? They're... I don't think they go and attack. No, no, no. I just been of like <laughs> going out. They've all got one nipple missing around the world and stuff like that. Yeah, they're an older culture. They're not that sort of like because there's still some tribes that are yeah. deep in the jungle that don't mix with anyone else. So I yeah. don't know if this culture mixes with others or stays to themselves. So. Is Peter a bullshitter? What are you feeling at the moment? Do you know what? I would have said yes, but the fact they got this pube. Mm-hmm. But then I don't know if it's just a coincidence with this pube. Mm-hmm. So what if I told you that this Peter... The... Sorry. Is this the pube of destiny? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what if I told you <laughs> that Peter took and passed a polygraph lie detector test uh i would say that polygraph tests aren't lie detector tests they test for stress yeah but he passed a polygraph lie detector test he might be (laughs) (laughs) get plucked (laughs) um he might be a sociopath if you're cool calm and collected you're you're passing Mm, yeah okay that test and if you believe, do you believe what actually happened? Then you're passing that test. So footage of this test was included in a documentary about an alien abduction therapist who actually had nothing to do with Peter, but used his case as definitive evidence of aliens at the end of the documentary. Ooh. Peter also later appeared in an episode of Ancient Aliens about alien breeding programs in about 2014, but unfortunately. A whole segment of Ancient Aliens will be a bit too long to include in the show. But essentially, Peter is legit. He hasn't gone out to make money from his story. He just wanted to make sense of his memories. Others have shared his story, but he hasn't gone out of his way to make any gain of his own. Oh, that does make him legit. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got a question. Mm-hmm. What's his wife said about all of this? Um, Are they still together? 
did he cheat? I'm going to get to that. Mm. I don't want to answer it yet. Oh, and did the woman that he slept with just happen <laughs> to have... <laughs> to live next door. <laughs> like, this pew. Maybe he drunk too much, took some women home and... Uh, at seven in the morning after dropping his wife off at the train station. You never know. But yeah, okay, I take your point. The only element of concern I could find within my deep, deep probe was that Peter was signed off work during a second incident after taking a shovel to the head at work. Peter was prescribed pretty strong pain medication, but as I say, the hair exists and is still in storage now. You, you can't dismiss him for that, though, because the hair still exists. Mm-hmm. I'm on that fence. Yeah. I think, I don't know if I've said this before, but this is one of our toughest ones because it's such an outrageous story, but it's also got some of the strongest evidence. All right, let's just summarise today's probe, shall we? Yeah. We have Peter Curie having an experience of lost time as a child, being visited by aliens in 1988 and then visited again in 1992, this time leaving behind physical evidence in the form of a blonde hair wrapped around the tip of his penis. The hair was subsequently DNA tested in two places, the shaft and the root, and came up with puzzling but legit results, linking two places far, far away from each other, as well as possible disease immunity. This is possible definite evidence of alien DNA splicing, or at least a link between cultures without links, probably certainly due to aliens. Before we conclude, do you have any final thoughts? I thought I may have swayed more to one side after saying that. Mm-hmm. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Still in the same place. I got nothing. So. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> Peter stayed with his wife and actually had a couple of children. Often with these kind of stories, those involved end up separated for some reason. But Peter didn't. He's a good, faithful, honest man. He bit an alien titty, took the nipple clean off to stay faithful to his wife. Does this lean you more towards a but it was aliens? Were any of his children's hair tested afterwards? Not that I know of, no. I've pretty much given you every bit of evidence on the case. I really don't know. (laughs) So there is actual definitive proof of this hair. Yeah, exists to this day. It's still being kept in storage. Like I said, it showed disease immunity and signs of separate cultures that don't have anything to do with each other. It was... But we also don't know if these cultures ever crossed paths. The hair itself like was there could blonde. be a small pocket <laughs> of these individuals that are living together. Like not everyone goes and gets their hair DNA tested. So you're thinking a hidden alien community somewhere? No, just a hidden <laughs> human <laughs> community somewhere. Having been spliced together by aliens. Having been aliened. Introduced to each other in by some alien. other by way alien. that by is alien. not alien. And then having... Oh, I really don't fucking know. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> oh. Well, it's, it's decision time, Mon Frere. Are you saying that it was aliens? It's not aliens. You... I am so... Close to it. <laughs> you have no idea. But because there is the possibility of mm. these people meeting, just having children, and one of those could just have had, we know how a complete some mutation. Yeah, and some DNA can skip generations. That is why I am on the side of this is not aliens. But if I was to put it down as a percentage. It's 51.49. I wish I had more to sway you, but this is literally everything, like I say. This yeah. man has not gone out of his way to seek anything from it. No, he really hasn't. He's, yeah. There's no... It's, the story is what it is. The evidence is what game. it is. And this is probably some of the strongest evidence we're going to see. It's the only physical evidence that I'm aware we've come across. Obviously, we've got a couple of videos, but they're not physical evidence so mm. much as visual evidence. This thing has been studied and it's different DNA from different cultures mixed in a way that isn't known. But I'm not saying it was aliens. (laughs) (laughs) I think this is one that could be something. 
but there's just not enough to yeah. make it something just you need that little bit extra don't you yeah this is definitely one of our best cases in terms of strong evidence i mean if something but, else came out i'd be happy to retract my statement and, yeah but, but yeah the outrageousness of the story itself is also what gets me a little bit and the fact he was hit with a shovel just beforehand yeah that, that's bonkers one y'all <laughs> <laughs> Nordics come up so much. They do. Should we do an episode on them one day? I think we have them on the list somewhere. Well, yeah, but I've got I've got a side probe list going on. It's along with Nordics, Roswell, and something else. I think which are the like massive ones where we may end up doing an episode each. Hmm. Because there's so much. Well, out to be there. fair, Roswell is on our list. That'll be a standard probe, whether it's. I think you can probe into Roswell quite a lot, though. Well, that might be a two part or it might be a ten part, but I'm saying it's on our to do list, whereas Nordics are a species as such. Oh, yeah. And true. we don't have species to investigate as yet. Well. <laughs> I won't ruin a future probe, but yes, there is one coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah any final thoughts uh no that was a really good one <laughs> like, 51 to 49 percent oh oh you're sure you don't want to change your mind i'm i'm sure i'm sure it's so close right well screw you that's it for today's probe <laughs> if you'd like to probe us we are on instagram at but it was aliens podcast if you'd like to anonymously insult us we are on twitter at but it was aliens you can find our facebook page at but it was aliens obviously there's a group attached to that extraterrestrial towers thank you for listening to but it was aliens but it was aliens and remember the truth is up there all wrapped around the tip of your dick so if in doubt hashtag probe and if you wake up missing a nipple Go find Peter.